Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. And I'm joined today by with Jenny Sauer, and we are working on module number seven in the IFIS basics. How are you doing today, Jenny? I'm good. Good. Okay, great. And so are you ready to get on with the IFIS? Here of we course. go. All right. Ready to go. Here we go. And remember, our four steps in the IFIS, it's so easy to create data in the IFIS. It just takes four steps. In, in uh, module five, we learned how to create a location. Here, we learned how to create or review and edit a location. Module six, we learned how to create a workbook and assign it to a location. We are now on step three, which is create or review a site. Now, keep in mind, enter once, use many times. That's the mantra of data. Enter once, use many times. You do not want to recreate things if you don't need to recreate them. First thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and define what is a site. If you remember, we talked about what is a location. And if you forget what a location is, just make sure that you look up, look that up in the lexicon of words that we have. And a location is defined as a one contiguous piece of land. That one contiguous piece of land also has one GPS grid coordinate to it. Now, a site is a specific spot within the location. It's not outside the location, it's inside the location. So once I select my host where I wanna place it, that becomes our site. Jenny, can we, do you think we can have more than one site in a location? I mean, this is a pretty big orchard. Of course, I think you can have many sites, only one location, but many sites on the location. And that's exactly correct, one location, but many sites. Make sure that you check with your supervisors for the naming. How do you name your sites? Is there an order in which you name them? Some places keep a spreadsheet in order to name them. However you want to do it, just be consistent with the way you do it. And keep in mind, remember, with locations, when you, if possible, when you have an address, please use it. So when we take a look at this one here, this is the location, this is the office, for this location, and that covers this one big contiguous piece of land here. And then each, these are each of our sites that we have here, and each of those has their own grid coordinate. That grid coordinate is exactly where that trap is. If you wanted to move this trap over to the, let's say to the other side of the host, a citrus tree could have a canopy that's up to 20 feet in diameter. And that's pretty long distance for the most part. But do you, do you think you really need to create a new site just because you're moving it from one side of the tree to the other? What do you think, Jenny? I guess I'd ask my supervisor and, and find out what the survey protocol was. But it's the same host. So I would, I would lean towards keeping the site. Exactly. And that's exactly correct. Check with your supervisor because every office will define how big an area that a site actually covers. Keep that in mind because you know you can move that site, you can move that trap to the other side, or you could even move it to the next tree over. But you're actually recording that information in your survey book in the comments area, and that hey, on that physical survey book that's not the IFIS, hey trap moved to the other side of the tree or trap moved to the next tree over. And that's where your comments will be. And that's how you'll know where that trap actually is. Because realistically, when you're going to find a trap, you're going to service that trap. When you get within a hundred feet of that trap, are you looking at your GPS anymore? I mean, what do you think, Jenny? Would you be looking at your GPS? Doing this into the tree and, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. probably looking at notes that are written there as well. Unless if you're doing something that's hyper, hyper sensitive, just think of a, a site as a specific spot on the ground and that could have a diameter of 40 feet, 20 feet, whatever it is, whatever the protocol is for the program, check with your supervisor and they should be able to tell you exactly how to manage that. When we go into the IFIS, remember, as soon as you log in to the IFIS, it takes you to the home tab. And we know we're on the home tab. Why, Jenny? Because it's green. It's green. And since we're on step three of our four steps, which is creating a site that's part of a location, 
sites is we're working with locations that have many sites. What tab do we need to go to? Locations, I think. Exactly. Make sure that you find the locations tab and click on the locations. Again, 90% of your answers are on the screen in front of you. And how many sections of this particular page do we have? It looks like three, okay. folder management, workbook list, and location. So we're working with location because we want to create a site because a site is a sub location. So in our other module, we figured out how we can find our, our locations. Now, the one we wanna work with is the location that we created for the John E. Moss Federal Building, okay? Now, we wanted to know what were, and if you've got a bunch of locations and you want to filter it all out and it's assigned to a workbook like we did in step two, all you have to do is find that workbook, click on the link on the, on the number of locations associated with it. In this case, it's Rudy's workbook. That's the one that it's associated with and that's what's going to bring up the associated location. Now, Jenny, can you tell me how many sites we have associated with this particular location zero and how can you tell that how can you tell that we've got zero well there's this tidy there's a tidy column that says sites and then down that column there's a number and it says zero exactly so now we know that we've got zero sites associated with our location so now this is the one place where it's not really intuitive so all you have to do is click on that number zero and it's going to bring up the locations detail page just like we saw in step one for creating locations now hmm how many major sections of this page do we have jenny i see four there's location details treatment and restoration documents sites which is what we're looking for and then location history exactly these are our four different areas so remember 90% of your answers for the questions that you have are on the screen in front of you, okay? And since we're working with sites, now we go to the sites section right here. Hmm. Yeah, I think there's a way we can create a site, Jenny. What do you think? Maybe that blue button that says create. There you go. That's exactly correct. You are becoming an expert, Jenny. I feel like and such so a winner. Audience. <laughs> exactly. Make sure that you name your name your site give it a decent name and check with your supervisor to find out what the naming protocols is for the, for the site and in this case i'm going to call this site parking lot west and if there is a particular naming protocol that you would use for it you can in this case i'm just going to use site number one and do not associate it with a template and if we remember from when we were working on locations why shouldn't we associate it with a template. What do you think, Jenny? Well, then it remains locked into that template. Exactly. And it's the same reasoning for targeted. So targeted, you have an option of saying yes or no. The reason why we want to say no here is because what's the mantra for data that we for entering data into a system? Enter once, Jenny? use many times. Exactly. So if we enter once, use many times, and we want to reuse this site with a different program. So if we're using this site for Asian Citrusilid, that's citrus, right? Could we use the same exact site for Sweet Orange Scab or SOS? Not if we target it, but yes, sure. If we leave it untargeted, then we could use the site again and again. Exactly, because if I target for one, I'm targeting it for all the other ones, right? So that's why when we're creating our sites for the first time, Actually, when you're creating a site, always say no. So that way you're not targeting that particular site for other programs. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to also enter in our latitude and longitude and make sure that since we are on the western side of the globe, we always have to make sure that we're, we use what kind of number here in the longitude, Jenny? It should be a negative number. A negative, exactly, a negative number. And then we make sure that we have our latitude in here. Once we've got our latitude and longitude entered in, we can select our geo method, which in this case is gonna be manual entry. Choose the appropriate one and make sure that you observe what you're entering it in because these terms 
will mean something, you know, when you get to a, into mass data entry. So you need to know what you're working with. And in this case, since I'm manually entering it, I'm saying digitize manual entry. The VDOP, HDOP, and PDOP, don't worry about that, uh, that portion of it, because that's for higher level functions. And in our case, we're not doing any higher level functions, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we're going to make this active. If you notice, you've got three statuses, you can make it active, inactive, or retired. Because remember, once you've added information or associated this information with other activities, all that activity is associated with it. You can't delete this unless if you delete all of the other activities. So in this case, if we don't want to use it anymore, we could retire it or make it inactive because maybe they shut that field down for the period of time. So we're going to make this active. And then once we've done all that, now we can go ahead and save it. And that's all we have to do. And now you can see here, we've created our site. We've got, it's number one, it's not targeted. We've got our latitude and longitude, all that's in there. What happens if I want to delete this site? How do you think I could do that? Imagining there were more than one site might help too, but I think you probably select it right where your mouse is now, select it, and then hit delete, and that would delete those that are selected. And that's exactly correct. That's exactly how you delete a site. That's how easy it is. But remember, IFIS is a last, last in, first out system. So if the last thing you entered was a bunch of activities against this site, well, guess what? You're going to have to delete all those activities in order to delete the site. So I just wouldn't worry about it. I would just leave it there. You may want to make it retired, change the status on it, whatever, because when you have a bunch of activities, that history is going to be there and it'll take you forever to be able to just delete all of those. Um, and I do not recommend it. It seems obvious to me that you could select that edit button and make changes just like uh, the location or workbook edits. Is that correct? Yep, that's exactly correct. So if we wanted to edit this location, we look here under the edit column, you'll see the little clipboard and all you have to be able to do is click on the edit. There you go. All your information comes up in the form and all you have to do is edit it and then you can click on save. Keep this in mind with sites and locations, sites and locations are not the trap itself. They are just a place on the ground. It has a grid coordinate and that site doesn't move. Once you've identified it, it's got a latitude and a longitude to it. That site does not move and neither does the location. The location doesn't move. It's the trap that moves itself or the activity moves itself. So we've covered out of our four steps, we've covered the first step, which is create or review a location, to create or uh, create or review a workbook, and then assign a location. And now we're on step three, which is create a site for that location. Okay, and I think we covered it. We're done with uh, with module seven. Thanks, Jenny. It's been great. Thank you.